Good morning, it's Monday. Happy Monday, Monday. something like that where you can send pictures to like her her frame her electronic frame and it actually worked this time she got them what pictures did you send just pictures of us and miracle to your grandmother and told her that i loved her because i've been trying to tell you you need to call her yes i do okay let's get to reading Come on, Doctor, you want me to read before it? she comes down here. You want me to read it? Sure, go ahead. Why not? It's Hebrews 6.19. It's code, so it's called Nine Anchors Away, Hebrews 6.19. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Think about that for a minute. Our scripture today is all about putting our hope and faith in Jesus. We love the scripture, don't we? I've seen it. On, I've seen this verse on T-shirts. I've seen so many anchor tattoos with this scripture reference. I've seen this on bumper stickers. Look, I get it. Anchors look cool, and this verse makes anchors sound amazing until you need to use one. Have you ever thought about that? The way you use an anchor in the middle of a storm. This is when your boat is being thrashed around, when the waves are out of control, and when your life is in danger. You throw it over the side so that it sinks to the bottom and holds you in place. Pay attention. An anchor holds you there. Wait, so God's hope is so that we go through the storm? Yes, absolutely. Let's be honest. What we really want the scripture to say is, this is a strong and trustworthy helicopter. That's what we really want, isn't it? God, please fly in and get me out of here. But what he's telling us is, I see you in the storm. I see you struggle. I see your tears. But I'm not taking you out of it. I'm going to hold you steady all the way through it. The thing we need to understand and remember is that when it's storms of life that build you into the person God has called you to be. If God pulled you out of the storm as soon as it started, then we would never have a chance to develop, develop our character fully. Storms aren't fun, trust me, I know. But it should be extremely comforting to know that our hope and trust in Jesus is a strong, solid, trustworthy anchor. We may be going through a storm, but we know we can have confidence that we won't be blown off course. We know we won't be destroyed. We know you. We know we're not alone. Our hope is in Christ, is like an anchor for our souls, providing stability, security, and access to God. As we deepen our relationship with Jesus and hold on to this hope, we can live as anchored people, even in the midst of life's storms. Let us continue to fix our eyes on Jesus, our forever High Priest, who we gone, who has gone before us and made a way for us to really know God. Amen. Let me challenge you today. Let God truly be the anchor of, anchor of your soul. Stop praying for a quick exit out of the storm that you're in. Hold on to Him and His Word because you're anchored in the promises of God. Change your perspective about the storm you may find yourself in today. See it as a situation that will bring you bring about your elevation. Let God use this time to build you, strengthen you, and develop you. He has never left anyone out in the storm alone. He won't start today with you. So it's real. I like how he... Keeps us in our storms. Yeah. Let's just dig our way out of them. Because, I mean, really, if you think about it, most of our storms are created by us. So why would he come in and rescue us some from are, something that we... Some aren't. Yeah, But mostly, a lot of it is stuff that we've brought up on ourselves. Mostly because of yourself. But he still is faithful. Right. He's still God. God is God. And, and how much time of our life we waste begging him to... Take it away. Just take it all away. Just take it away. Instead of just realizing that he's there with us to get through it with us. It's just getting through it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Mm. I mean, it's kind of like uh, what I was listening to you on yesterday, which I really like. It's about the middle, man. How much time How much time of our life do we waste? Like, man, can't wait till Sunday sermon, man. And it's only like, what? Thursday. If I could just get through this, if I could just get through that, if I could just get to this, if I could just get to that point, I could get, we spend probably 80% of our lives wishing we were there, not really, 
that God's trying to bless us right here. Right now. It's about the in-between. It's about Sunday after church through the whole week till Saturday. What are you gonna, how are you going to respond to life? How are you going to handle life Monday through Friday versus, Oh, uh, yeah, I'm good. I worship God. 45 minutes on Sunday, right? Of course, that's going to be a blessing to be around all God's people worshiping all the good stuff. It's all good. But what are you doing afterwards? After you heard that good message, how are you, what are you, are you putting that message into your life? Are you continuing to be in the Word of God on Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Thursday morning, Wednesday morning, Friday morning, all those days? Or are you just going to church on Sunday? Saying I can't wait till Sunday like to that's hear another the only message. Day. Right. right, just makes no sense. But I feel like we've all done it. We all do do it. But once you understand that God is there with you every, every day. day, every moment, even the times you're struggling, He's there. And uh, like we've said many times before, like once you get all that figured out, dude, it makes such a big difference in your life. It really, really does. It really, really does. Because he's there, and he loves you, and he don't want you to struggle. But you're going to go through struggles in order to build your own character, in order to give you reason to know you need him, most of all. Yeah. That's, I feel like that is absolutely the biggest reason for any of our crazy, crazy storms in life. Because then he's like, okay, now what are you going to do with it? You want to keep trying to do it on your own? See what that's getting you. All right. No hope, no nothing, just empty. Like, Desolate. Like the biggest percentage of our country today. So many people just with empty emotion, empty hope, empty everything. Just like those dudes, I know one dude specifically that was messaging on Tristan's video the other day. When Tristan wrote him a long thing back, and he was super nice. He wasn't mean, but he was talking truth, and the dude message back was like whatever just you can believe in whatever nonsense you want to believe like and he even mentioned something about How small uh, like you? of course it's scary of course death is scary but like that's the only reason we love Christ so is... like you're sitting there admitting that you're scared of death when this guy is sitting here quite Telling literally you. trying to give you some the only hope out of death and you just refuse it but that right there is what I think is what I mean about people can turn their back on Jesus. People can lose their salvation. There's a little bit of God in everybody, but yes, you can turn your back on God and give your salvation freely back, just like He freely gave it to you. You can freely hand it right back to Him with that mindset right there. Just completely rejecting it when it naturally lives inside of you. And like we were saying on the live Saturday, he loves those people right now just as much as he loves me and you right now. Like, there's no shortage of love for anybody. Mm -hmm. Even while they act that way. Even whenever they go to judgment and their tongue has to confess and their knee has to bow. He's still going to love them. Even though they're about to spend the rest of their life in Hades because they rejected him their whole life. He still loves them. He don't want to see that. But they do it to themselves. Just like we put ourselves through... A, so much nonsense in this life it's just nonsense it didn't have to happen but we choose these paths and these just rough roads more than just rolling down the highway with him right are you, you pray? the prayer yeah let me pray for you today God we thank you today that you are our hope in the middle of the storm God change our minds today so that we don't focus on how bad things around us may seem let us instead focus on you. Thank you for using this storm to build us and shape us into being more like you. Thank you for using this storm as preparation for our elevation. We trust your timing and your process. Thank you that we may put our trust in you. You will lead us into your inner sanctuary where we can experience the fullness of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That was good. Amen. Amen. And amen. All right, we're good to go. Amen. i got to get to work before I'm late. And amen. And amen. And amen. Okay. amen. All right, y'all. Thank you for hanging out with us. Sorry we missed Friday. We actually did sit down and record a little bit Friday, but it was only like eight minutes, and time I got chopped down. It wasn't good it enough. Up. It was only like five minutes long. So, so yeah. Here we are. It's Monday, right. and I'll probably have me doing a live here a little while later on once I get a little break. So, 
Love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. You. If you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Y'all know what to do. Until next time, we'll catch you on the next Bye. one. Yesterday, there was sun and there was rain. Beauty in the mundane. Startled our eyes, we let go of disguise.